What's up, y'all? I'm back out here on the range on another cloudy day. Not supposed to hit 50 till about the time I'm ready to pack up and leave today. But as long as it stays dry, I'm still going to have some fun out here. First thing on the agenda is this little 410 board KSG that I've been wanting to check out. About lost count there. So far, so good. All right, let's take us a quick look at this odd little thing. So again, we got the Caltech 410 bore KSG. Obviously the 410 version of their 12 gauge KSG. It's got the dual tube like the KSG, but to me, it's kind of like a cross between the KSG and the KS7 with this carry handle up here like the KS7 has. Now the KS7 is a single tube. So again, it's got the dual tube like the KSG, but the carry handle and optic system of the KS7. So as you can see, just like those, this is a bullpup platform, meaning that all your action and all is going on behind your trigger group here. So you get a really nice compact package. The full length of this is only just barely over 26 inches, and then you still retain a full 18 and a half inch barrel on it. And since we're on the dimensions, this thing is pretty light also, unloaded. It's just barely over five pounds. The width on it really, really narrow. I think it's like 1.7 inches, so under two inches width. So this is a really, really nice light compact compact little package. Now this one here, believe it or not, claims to be Magpul Stealth Gray colored. That's what I ordered and this is what came in the box. The serial number matches, but I will say there's some funny stuff going on with a couple of different labels on the box, but uh, I gave Caltech a call and had somebody talk to some people over in the repair department who may have actually seen both of these, the, the gray and the black side by side. And she came back and said that the guy told her that yeah, it looks just like black and he don't know how how that color got approved. So supposedly this is supposed to be the stealth gray version, but I'm telling you in any kind of light, I'm sure on camera, you, it looks totally black. If I put it beside any other thing black, it looks completely black in any kind of light. If I try hard, I mean, I can make it feel like a darker gray and, and I assume it is. I mean, they're claiming it is, but if anybody out there has one of these in the stealth gray color and yours is basically black like this, let me know down in the comments. But anyway, we'll We'll start from the back and run right through it real quick. Nice rubber pad back here on the stock. You got a sling attachment point. It does come with a basic little canvas sling, nothing special at all, but they do throw in a sling. Rubber butt pad here. Obviously all your ejection port and your bolt and everything like that's down here. So you can see, I don't know how well you'll be able to see there your uh, lifters and all that. Lifters actually part of the stock. There's some really weird stuff with this thing. I've taken it all apart and cleaned it and oiled it down. Um, as far as appearance inside and impression that I get, it's it's not that it's cheap, cheap. Like there's some cheap looking things about it, but it's some weird things like the way they use some things in combination seems a little bit weird. One example of that, the kind of what I'm talking about here is you can probably see your, your uh, magazine tube here. It's got some little metal, you may not be able to see it. It's got some little metalish ramps, but there's also like some little plastic kind of ramps to help you feed the shells in and load it. And that's actually part of the stock itself. It's molded into the stock. So it doesn't feel like a really harsh transition, but there are some really sharp edges that would definitely need some wearing down to be really, really smooth where you could run things fast. But anyway, also down here being dual tube, you got a selector here as far as which tube you want to run from and load from. The best way to kind of remember it is whichever way the point of this is pointing that's the active tube because down in there it'll be blocking off the other one and now one other thing down in this area i don't know if it's focusing or not but they got some nice little tabs that are spring loaded to unload your magazine tube where you don't have to run the action and you don't have to fool with the little retainers on like a traditional setup so then moving on along you got a cross bolt safety here which i really don't mind you can kind of get to that with your thumb right there so it's kind of reminiscent of an ar little setup right there and kind of you know your your muscle memory is used to that right there right in front of the trigger well is your action release now it is ambidextrous you can see you got levers on both sides so that's your release there pretty nice 
that it's ambidextrous, obviously it ejects from the bottom. So that's nice for ambidextrous use also. And then of course you got your hand grip here on your action tube, nice texture in there, nothing really, really aggressive. And you got some nice stops right here. So you ain't putting your hand out in front of the muzzle. Now, as far as the rail and sight system on this, I was glad that they used this because with the KSG with it down here, you have to raise your optic up so high that it looks kind of odd because it's hard to get down and get a good cheek weld on this straight stock. I'm just going to tell you right now, I don't care what nobody tells you. It's tough to really get down on that thing and get behind your sight if it's not high up. And I was glad to see this, but after taking a few test rounds out here, this may not cut it either because it's actually nice. It's a nice thought they've got here. So on the rear, I hope this thing will focus for y'all. On the rear, you've got what they're calling a notch, but it's not a notch. It's basically just a square that's sticking up of plastic. And what you're supposed to do, if you see the front there, the front fiber, it's a triangle. You're supposed to basically set your fiber triangle on that square right there. And then that's your sight picture. But I'm gonna tell y'all right now, if you do that, if you set that triangle right on top of that square like that, you're gonna be taking out kneecaps. You ain't, you're gonna be so, so low. It's incredibly low. I had to, to get on target out there. I had to take and just basically forget about that back square and float my triangle up kind of where I know my hold is gonna be. Even if I'm like this, I mean, y'all can see I'm down on it. I'm nowhere near behind that site. And look how high up the butt pad is. It's that high out of the pocket there. And I'm down. I mean, I'm down on it, buddy. I'm down on it. Y'all see, I'm cramming and I'm nowhere near that sight picture. To get it lined up, I have to literally go, I mean, I have to do this number. I have to be that low and, and tucking in and, and so hard. And even at that, you are so low. This thing is just not any kind of use for me at all, unless you just get used to how you just float it out there in the air. So I'll probably be changing that up and figuring something out there. And again, it is a shame because you got some uh, M-lock slots built on here. So you could put your light on, you're ready to roll. You don't have to change anything if that thing would be a good lineup. Um, now they do make the pick rail, but then like I say, I'm gonna have to raise it up. So after maybe today, I'll do some more running and see how it feels but for ease of use for somebody that's really not proficient with shotties especially or firearms in general that's kind of what i had in mind for this and that's really not user friendly right there if somebody's got a struggle especially i know y'all seen people who are not real they haven't done a lot of shooting and stuff and they have a real hard time getting behind that you'll see them out here they'll be doing this number and all that so this is not very user friendly for getting a really nice cheek weld and getting your sight picture even if it was point of impact now a couple last things to mention one of the other big selling points of this is the capacity you got dual tube there so you can hold five and five plus one of three inch 410 so 11 total of a three inch or you can do seven and seven in one of two and a half inch so 15 rounds but i realized doing some testing the capacity wise you can also do five and five and one of three inch and you can top those two tubes off with a another two and a half so you basically got 11 three inch and two two and a half inch and then i guess the final thing i'd want to touch on is the trigger it's a bull pup i mean really that's all you got to say that being said it's 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 a shoddy anyway so it doesn't really you know what i'm saying it feels like your average shoddy trigger but I think that's plenty of talking about it. Let's get over here and run some more rounds. All right, I got us down here at seven yards from this mutant rat target I'm gonna use to do a little pattern on. Uh, I'm gonna use my sight picker just like they want you to. I'm gonna put my green triangle right on top of this hunk of square of plastic right there. So I'm gonna have to really mash my face and I'm gonna cover his eye with my green triangle and I want y'all to see just how low this thing impacts. Now I've got uh, five rounds of this Remington Ultimate Defense three inch triple alt buck, five pellets. So. Should be a good pattern with this, I'm assuming, but I, I know it's gonna be low. Let me show y'all what we get here. I mean, I really gotta cram down on this thing, y'all. I mean, I'm covering his eye. I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, that was it, so. Y'all can see, yeah, you can see how low it actually hit. I'll bring you up a little closer and show you. All right, quick look here. Not bad at all, really. That's your, about the furthest point from here to here. So you're looking at, what's that? Uh, about a four and three quarter inch pattern, four and a half, four and three quarter inch. So not bad now. That's only seven yards. And you see the drop there. That's about 
I mean, the lowest wood collar about the middle. So that's about five inches down from the point of aim right there. And that's only at seven yards. So again, if you get out further, it's got a pretty good size height over bore as far as where you're impacting with that sight set up. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time we're just gonna use some Winchester AA number nine skeet load. And this is two and a half. So what I did was split tube this one. I've got four in this tube and three in the other. So I'll run that four and swap over and make sure it functions good doing that too. Uh, this time I think I'll put my triangle right over over the shoulder right there see what she does let's see what happens here y'all with the dual tube set up so four and then three all right so then I guess we can go ahead and kick that. Well, we got to kick that one. Switch her over. All right, so I had to do another. Maybe I did the wrong thing. I probably did the wrong thing by kicking that one out first before I swapped it over. Let me try that again. All right, y'all, since you're probably going to be seeing this on Easter if everything goes according to schedule and I don't have to hunt that old rabbit down for stealing my ammo like I did a couple years ago, I figured we'd do a quick little egg hunt here anyway. So I'm going to test that thing, and I know exactly, now that my brain worked for a second, now obviously it wasn't going to work like I did a while ago because y'all know I had four and three. I ran all four. I ejected that fourth one, and then I flipped it over. Well, at that point, it was already too late because my, my lifter had already come back, and that shell in this side was still being blocked so what i'm gonna have to do and i hope this works is run one two three four don't eject that fourth one flip it over then eject the fourth one and it should bring this other one from the two so this time i've got four and four and we'll we'll see if that works according to plan it should though this is definitely going to take some getting used to if you want to be really fast and proficient doing that double tube stuff well, let's see what we got we're going to do four and then four more this is a seven and a half top gun two and a half inch Now I want to flip over and we should. Yeah, I felt it right there. So that was four, I got four more and I didn't get not a single boom boom to go off. I think my point of impact's off. Let's see what I can get on the ground here. Nothing. May not have the velocity. It's got to have the velocity. These, these uh, pellets are awful small. I've done lost my other ones down here. That one sounded like it actually went off, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to round these boom boom back up and get them again. Let's try this one over here again. I don't know. I got a weird little pop. I don't think they went off. Let me see if I can set them back up. All right, y'all. That definitely didn't go according to plan. I got a couple of the eggs. I didn't even realize the stuff didn't even fall out of these two, but I did actually get to hit all of them with three or four pellets a piece. Those seven and a half just may not be big enough to cut it. So I got, uh, I think four more rounds here, three or four, three. I just put three of uh, that buckshot, the ultimate defense, triple alt buck, five pellets. So those eggs still got their things. I doubt they're going to go off, but those two the, out of those other eggs I put on this target so it's definitely going off let's see what we got here let's try these eggs first if i can get them with at least one pellet it's just such a weird impact yeah, i think i got that and still didn't and that one i'm not sure where we went let's just get that one in the middle That's the way to do it. All right, it's a good thing we didn't have to hunt that Easter Bunny this time because he probably would have got away with the way that went. I got us at the bench this time. I'm going to run a handful of slugs. Now, I've got in this one tube, I've got five of these Federal Power Shocks of 1175, both of them two and a half quarter ounce slug. Now, in the other tube, I've got three of these Boom, these ACG Ammo um, Made in Turkey Gorel Hunting. This stuff I picked up back when you couldn't hardly find 410 at all, and I've run some of these 
these in my um, circuit judge and my regular judges and this stuff swells up big time the brass the the uh, rim on this stuff swells like crazy and jams up in those all the time and before i started this video i always try to send a few rounds and get my point of impact just to make sure the thing actually will function period i ran a few of these up close here and they wasn't wanting to eject from this thing i got one of them to eject and the other one it just wouldn't grab the rim of it i'm guessing it's because them rims swelled up again well let's see what happens i i got a feeling it'll be fine with this it's ran everything out here other than this so far so let's see what we get here i'm just gonna go to the 25 because i'm still really really sketchy about the point of aim versus point of impact on this i think i'm gonna have to aim pretty high so i'm gonna try to cover up at the very head with the uh, triangle here and see what i get Yeah, see nothing. I have no idea where I'm at. All right, so I had to put my triangle floating up in space about the top of that first little berm you see above that thing. So yeah, it's it's just so low. And I'm telling you, I'm crammed down on it. I've got the triangle sitting on top of this. You literally just have to forget about that and just, just get use your triangle out front and, and try to figure it out. Now I've done gotten so mixed up, I don't know if I even ejected. Did I eject? No, I didn't. All right. So that was two. Let's see if I can hold up high again. That's all it is to it. It's just, just got to hold incredibly high, which is not, which is no bueno. Yeah, see, I did the same thing. My triangle is completely over the top of that. So I'm just going to have to do a, a guessing routine is all that is. That was three. We got one more. Let's do one more. Yeah, same deal, same exact deal. Y'all see what I'm saying? So I'm probably, the, the shame about it is there's nothing you can do about this. This is completely fixed. So only thing you can do is take this off, get a rail and raise the optic up. Let's run this last power shock and then I'll swap it over. Yeah, that was empty. I, I definitely would have to get used to this and run this a lot to, to get familiar with the manual arms on this thing. I'm gonna put one more at the 25. I ain't going no further than the 25 with this today just because of how the sight picture is yeah see i mean i know where i have to hold but that's no good you know at distances because you're gonna have to re-guess every single time so let's swap it over here which i already goofed up y'all already probably noticed i ejected that round so now i'm gonna have to shuck it one time and then again to get my round in there so you're gonna have to do a eject no i didn't i didn't i'm wrong i'm wrong i'm good all right, so let's try these. Hopefully these will run and eject. I don't think it's gonna eject, but we'll see what happens. Let's see if these are about the same point of impact. I bet they are. Yeah, pretty much the same point of impact. Yeah, see, that didn't eject. See what I'm saying here? No eject. It, it uh, brought my next live round Y'all probably ain't even seeing. I know you ain't gonna be able to see. But my next live round sitting there and the spent one's in there. So now I've got to fish the thing out and get it reset. All right, let's do a little watermelon comparison here. Two different rounds in here. The first one's gonna be one of those three inch um, ultimate defense triple lock buck, five pellet triple lock buck. And then the second one's gonna be another one of those two and a half inch power shock slugs. So let's see what the difference is. Now, I'm gonna put my triangle front sight floated above that melon because I'm pretty sure that's where I'm gonna need to be to impact it. I think I floated a little too high on that one. Let me get another one to finish it off. All right, I'm confusing myself again, y'all. I said I've held too high, but if I hit at the bottom, which I believe I did, I didn't hold high enough. I mean, this thing's just really, I mean, the impact point is really, really low on this thing. Let me go up a little bit higher. Yeah, I had to go like a triangle and then leave a gap under it. All right, let's see if we can put together a little finale here, y'all. Couple cans of shaving cream and one of them boom booms from the eggs from earlier. I'm probably pressing my luck with them shaving cream cans, but I'm gonna see. I'm gonna have to float it out into the wild blue yonder here and guess at the impact. That wasn't it. And neither was that. Y'all can see, I mean, I'm way above and I saw some wood splinters. 
Let's just get the boom and we'll come back. That's more like it with the boom. All right, I'm gonna try to finish them shaving cream cans off with a couple rounds of this seven and a half inch target load, two inch. I'm gonna have to just hold so high, just, it's just such a guess, y'all. I mean, I could not even see the can. I totally couldn't see the can. I had to hold so high, I couldn't see nothing. I guess that's, I got it, that's what matters. Same exact thing. I think I might have hit a little higher low on that one still. All right, y'all. I think I'm going to call it right there for a pretty good first outing with the baby KSG. This thing functioned great out here today. Other than that crazy boom ammo, that stuff is just awful. Again, the, the rim swells up even in my judges. It locks the cylinder up so tight I can barely get the stuff open. So that don't surprise me at all. That's nothing but the ammo. Other than that, it ran everything. And I'm actually kind of surprised at that. Not because, I, like I say, it doesn't come off as cheap to me, but it comes off as just, it's just so different differently put together in the way they kind of merge some parts I, you know it just makes you think well maybe there might be a problem there but i mean it ran fine it ran smooth it loads fine uh the action is plenty good on it i didn't find myself wanting to short stroke it anytime so i think it's a good little shoddy so far i really didn't comment much while i was out here running it as far as what it felt like recoil is almost non-existent i mean incredibly low recoil it ain't smacking your shoulder it ain't smacking your cheek i mean this is virtually no recoil recoil for what this is very nice to have that capacity on it although again it would definitely take some practice getting used to with this manual arms to get real efficient at that but if i was going to use this for serious defensive purposes i would definitely run the heck out of it and make it like second nature that that was kind of my thought on this you know i think the premise of this is fantastic that many rounds of 410 coming out with virtually no recoil i mean you're talking about a potent little package right here for somebody who can't handle a 12 gauge who just don't like a 12 gauge or maybe they can handle it for a round or two but then after that they just really don't want no more of it this right here i think would be a great option for that now the one big thing i just do not like it y'all heard me throughout this video is the sight system on this thing and that's really a shame because i love the shape of the optic up here the fiber rod i like that whole gutter like that i, I like the sight picture itself if i could line that sight picture up properly and be where i wanted it to be it would be fantastic fantastic but that just ain't gonna happen and unfortunately this is not adjustable again so i'm definitely going to put the rail on here and put some optic on it it's not a totally bad thing because i've got some optics that were sent to me that i've got to check out anyway so definitely look forward to that but let me know what y'all think any y'all out there have this ksg 410 you got the ksg in 12 gauge what do you think about it how do you like it those y'all particularly that might have this 410 and if you've got one in this stealth gray that's something i'm still very curious about let me know if you've got a stealth gray if it's basically black if you enjoyed the video reach down and hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure you got your notifications turned on so you get notified when i upload new stuff like i always remind you if you're doing some shopping hit up those affiliate links down below i actually think i saw an ad from psa about this ksg 410 that they had some of these in stock so i'll leave some links in my campsite for y'all to check out anything you buy after hitting up those links down there i get a kickback from them toward the channel so i really appreciate that again a big thanks to all my range gang members and every single one of y'all for showing the support the way y'all do i've got one more test plan for out here today and it's really kind of relative to this it's that mossy 590 410 so y'all be on the lookout for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon